That question comes, even my kids were asking it today. Dad, why do we call this Good Friday? And how is it different from Black Friday? What's that all about, Dad? You know. I mean, isn't this the day that, that Jesus died grotesquely, gruesomely? Isn't this the day where we kind of see the horrendous effect of sin? Isn't Good Friday the day that commemorates the beatings, the hung trials, I guess you could say, the crucifixion of one who never committed sin? Why? 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 Why is this good? Good Friday is good because the suffering and death of Jesus, as horrific and as terrible as it was, it truly marked the dramatic culmination of God's plan. I mean, have you ever kind of had a plan to do something and then you're kind of coming to the end of that plan? Think about this. Since the Inception of humanity, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, there was a plan to save mankind. And now on Good Friday, there's this, this culmination of God's plan coming to this place where Jesus could say on the cross, it's finished. I mean, there must have been pain, yes, but release. It's done. It's finished. See, we are all born under the curse of sin, even, even Leonidas Ulysses Stephen Spencer. As cute as those curls are, he's under the curse of sin. Don't believe me? Take his toy away for five seconds and you'll believe me then. Well, how do we know that? Experience tells us that, yes. But Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it reads as follows. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world and Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone is sin. And God's perfect law re reveals that. If you say, well, I don't sin, well, let's just spend a little bit of time in the top 10, right? The 10 commandments. Let's not consider all 613. Let's just look at 10. God's law, though perfect, reveals the curse. I mean, in Galatians 3, Verse 13, Paul would write this. He'd say, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. See, this is the good news, that we are all born under the curse of sin and death because of the perfect life, death, burial of Jesus and his resurrection on Easter Sunday, every single man, woman, and child can experience forgiveness. They can experience freedom. They can be a part of a family, and they can have a future. Every single man, woman, and child because of what Jesus has done. Listen to me. Let me have your eyes. Let me have your attention. If Good Friday didn't happen, I'm sorry. You have no right to freedom. Forgiveness is not yours. You are under a curse. You are under the bondage and the penalty of sin. But because of Jesus, you can be forgiven. And it's not based on your attitude and your choices based on his, you can be brought into a family of freedom, and your future can be secure. That's good. I mean, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, Paul again writes this, God made him who had no sin, he had no sin, to become sin. It's not that he added a few sins to his account. I don't know that I've ever met someone that when I look at them, I'd say, you have become sin. I mean, that's gnarly. As gnarly as Leo gets, he's never become sin. But Jesus, 
God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know why this is so good? Because Jesus reversed the curse. The curse. The curse of what? Pride, lust, malice, deceit, gossip, drug use, lukewarmness, gluttony, murder, apathy, racism, lying, slander, laziness. The fear and entrapment of other people's opinion is a sin. Drunkenness, worshiping self over God, churchianity, a lack of love, cowardice, hypocrisy, hate, fornication, abortion, irreverence, empty religion, greed, envy, the constant need for approval, idolatry, addiction, indifference, self-reliance, lack of faith, selfishness, moralism, nationalism, joylessness, doubt, self-pity, even deism. They're all sin. And Jesus said, I'll take that. I want the penalty for that so that you can be spotless and free. Why is this so good? Well, I'm done with my verbal explanation. You know, back when the world was a little different, there was actually land around Gulf Breeze where you could build a house. And my wife and I had the privilege of building a, a home that we thought was very nice down in Holly by the sea. And we'd been living in it for probably three months. Our kids were still small. And I came home one afternoon, and it was, a, it was a beautiful afternoon, and we had these two sliding glass doors, one that went from our bedroom and the other that went from the den and kitchen area out to a porch. And I walked back into the den, and Len was getting dinner ready, and the kids were all there, and I opened the sliding glass door, and the screen was all kind of bent and I couldn't get it open, and, and I was, like, frustrated, and everyone's there, and I asked the question, who broke the door? Well, Neil kind of gave me the French salute. <laughs> Jenny, I didn't do it, Dad. I looked at Ryan. He said, I didn't touch it, and I said these infamous words that have followed me by my kids and my wife for a long, long time. I said, well, somebody did something. So, so here's the thing. No one wants to take responsibility for doing wrong. I mean, even in the garden all the way back, Adam, what did you do? Oh, it wasn't me. It was a woman you gave me. Woman, oh, it wasn't me. It was a serpent. He beguiled me. And, and nobody seems to want to take responsibility for their evil, for their wrong, for their transgressions. A cop pulls you over. I was speeding? Yeah, you were speeding. You know you were speeding. I ran that light? Ah, I didn't know. Listen to this passage. I want to read it to you, and it's very interesting to me. Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. But Isaiah knows the story, the real story, as he looks to the future. Because this was written way before the crucifixion, way before Good Friday. Surely he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet, he says, and he's speaking of the Jews, his people. Yet, we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. See, they, they saw his crucifixion, the Jews, predominantly most of them, as God punishing this man for being an imposter, for being a blasphemer. 
But then Isaiah continues, he says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. What's the passage say? That it was our sin, my sin, your sin. I mean, you can blame Judas. Hey, he sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. Pilate, he, he you know, washed his hands and said, no, 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 I, wait a minute, Pilate, you, you pronounced. The Romans, they, they, they carried out the decree. They're all guilty. But so are you and I. There, there are two words in this passage in Isaiah 53 that are very interesting. One is this. He was wounded for our transgressions. And then he was bruised for our iniquities. Transgressions and iniquities. Th- those two words are very strong words. Transgression means to, to break away. Transgression means to rebel against authority, to turn the other way. That's why as Isaiah unfolds this, he says, all we like sheep, all of us, he says, have gone astray. We've all transgressed. We have turned everyone to his own way. We rejected God's authority. Iniquity means not just to do evil. Oh, it's part of it. But it's the darkness, our nature, and our very hearts and character that causes us to do evil. And that's why he goes to the cross, because we're rebels and because we have this nature that we don't know what to do with. Isaiah foresaw the error, the mistake. Isaiah being a Jew, he knew that, that it wasn't God who afflicted him. It wasn't God who was chastising him for being an imposter. See, see, look at verse 4 again of Isaiah 53. Surely he bore our griefs, carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But then he goes on and answers that question correctly and says, no, it wasn't God. He did it for our peace, it says there in verse 5. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. The peace that you have in your heart because of Jesus, the, the fact that he stood in our place on our behalf, the wounds, the bruises that should have fallen on us fell on him and were all saved for his sake. I mean, there's been so much written, so much said about the cross, about the sacrifice, about what Jesus did for you and I and for all mankind. Listen to this ancient hymn. I I don't know if you've ever heard it before. The words are, well, they're pretty powerful. He says, it was I that shed the sacred blood. I nailed him to that tree. I crucified the Christ of God. I joined in the mockery. And of the shouting multitude, I feel that I am one. And in the crowd of voices, I recognize my own. Around the cross, the crowd I see, they mock the sufferer's groan. Yet still my voice, it seems to be as if I mocked alone. And today we look back, we look back to the cross, and we remember how how amazing our salvation is, how gracious God has been. The Apostle Paul, radical conversion experience, amazing testimony, but he never forgot the grace and the kindness and the goodness of God. Listen to what he says 
in 1 Timothy. He says, I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, a brazen, insolent man. But the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ was exceedingly abundant, full of love and faith. And then he says in verse 15, this is a faithful saying. He's speaking of himself and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Let me ask you a question. When you look back to the cross, when you look back to the time where you realize and recognize and understood, hey, it was my sin. He wasn't smitten by God. He wasn't afflicted by him. He, he, he was there because of my iniquities, there because of my transgressions. When, when you think of what he's done and, and his grace and, and him bearing your transgressions and your iniquities, Paul says, I was once a blasphemer. Paul, Paul remembers who he was. And this is uh, towards the end of his life. I don't think he ever forgot the, the power and the impact of Jesus in his life. And I don't think that it's wrong to look back to the cross. I was a brazen, insolent man, he says. Hey, when you look back, what do you say? I was once a... A liar? I was once a thief? I was once a drunk? I mean, when you, when you look back to the cross and you see, you know, a transformed life, you say, hey, I was once an adulterer, a drug dealer. Paul looked back. And he looked all the way back to the cross and he remembered what he once was. I was once a cheat or a blasphemer. But now, because of the cross, because of Good Friday, we are we're cleansed, we're forgiven. Our debt is paid. Listen to Isaiah as he looks forward to the cross, not back. We esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But, he says, no, that's not what was going on. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Every one of us, like sheep, have gone astray, and every one turned to his own way. We were all rebels, and the Lord laid on him the rebellion of us all. We share something together that's amazing. And that's the fact that the Lord laid upon him the iniquities of us all. And we all stand, as you have heard many times, at the, at the foot of the cross, level ground, because we're all like sheep who've gone astray. And tonight, if the Lord were to say to you, who were you before I found you? Like the Apostle Paul you, you, you probably have something you could say. You, you hopefully wouldn't say, like my kids did when I said, who broke the door? Oh, I was, I was always a good person. I, I've never done anything. Oh, I'm good. Not according to Isaiah. As he looks up to the time of the crucifixion, he says, all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. So tonight we celebrate the transformed life, the, the fact that Jesus took our place. Good Friday is good. Hey, th this is a good day. It was a beautiful day, was it not? And today we get to cap it off by remembering and celebrating together, being cleansed, forgiven, and our debt is paid.